शंभो महादेवाय योग योग योगेश्वराय भूत भूत भूते
कबीर सुनो भाई साधो जिन जाना तिन माना है भाई गगन की ओट निशाना है भाई दाहिने सूर चंद्रमा बाहे तिन के बीच छिपाना है भाई गगन की ओट निशाना है है भाई निशानी पारे सा 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 निशानी पाने सारे रे रे नी पानी सारे मागरे घर सनी सारे रे सा पानी मा पारे गे मा पारे सा 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 हजारों ख्वाहिशे ऐसी के हर ख्वाहिश पे दम निकले के हर ख्वाहिश पे दम निकले Namaskaram. Namaskaram to everyone. A bit early in the evening, we see some frogs are calling out. <laughs> that reminds me, it once happened. waiting for the quack. <laughs> it once happened, uh, a rabbit was romping around, <tsk> springtime, you know mad as a March hare. But then he heard a frog making desperate calls as if there was a pandemic. So the rabbit went about investigating, where is he calling from? Then he found a hole in which the frog was sitting and then the rabbit asked, what are you doing in this hole, why are you screaming? The frog said, uh, I fell into this hole, I'm not able to get out. The rabbit said, just hold on, I will go get a ladder for you. So went out to procure a ladder. You know, ladders are not always simply available, you have to go search for it. Even in the yoga center, if you want a ladder, most of you don't know where to find a ladder. Because we want… don't want you to get on top of the roof, La ladders are always kept in a certain way. <laughs> so after some time, he got the ladder and came back. But he found the frog was already sitting outside the hole. Then the rabbit asked, how did you get out? Well, after you left, 
a snake came into the hole, so I got out. <laughs> Just now I was talking to confederation of uh, industrial groups in the country. Everybody is very apprehensive because these are not easy times for you to be running a business or an industry because Always there are uncertainties in any large activity, but right now there are too many variables and too much uncertainty. So there are genuine problems on the ground of financial issues, human issues, in the sense you have your employees, thousands of them, if you pay them without work, you will go bankrupt. If you don't pay them, their lives will get bad. They may not survive this month or two. But if you pay up all the money now, even if they come to work after this lockdown is over, whatever you manufacture, whatever it is, whether it's an automobile or phone or apparels or anything, for the market to come back, it may take months, it will. The lockdown will go away in a few weeks, but when we start working and producing, the market will be very hesitant. For it to come back, it'll take time. So all these concerns, financial concerns, human concerns, variety of problems, loans that you have taken, the money that you owe to people, the EMIs, bank loans, various things. All this is worrying them a lot. So, uh, everybody, see you hear him, <laughs> but this disruption, this massive disruption of all businesses, the entire nation is going through a disruption, not just one nation, almost every nation. Unfortunately, in some nations, uh, the fatality rate is going runaway number. The United States, unfortunately, has crossed twenty thousand. The fatalities in the world has crossed hundred thousand. As I mentioned yesterday, a serious concern is that people who are infected, then tested negative, are again testing positive. There are cases where, for example, near Mysore, a certain pharmaceutical company received packages from China. Right now, China is trying to revive itself after almost two and a half months of lockdown. And they're blocking all the foreigners from coming as others were doing blocking Chinese from coming, thinking it's in the rest of the world, not with them. But this person opened this package, within twenty-four hours he had some fever. Now in that industry, twenty people are infected, tested positive. So since then, uh, everybody is on a tizzy because everybody believed on a cardboard package, the virus will stay alive only for four to six hours. But this package left China seventy-two hours ago and uh, still it infected them. We don't know whether it came from China or it passed through some other port or maybe it landed in Chennai and there it caught it, nobody knows, nobody's able to trace this back. Whichever way, now the concerns are multiplying. With these concerns multiplying, people who have investments, People who have businesses and industries to run are deeply concerned and 
the geopolitical situations are changing rapidly. Who will come out on the tops has become a big question. And many realignments are being made silently. How long it will be silent, when it will burst forth on the surface, many, many, many issues. Human activity has become so complex, small disruptions would throw it off, but now this is a major disruption. But this is also a possibility, when there is a disruption, there is a possibility. So, uh, a snake has come into the hole, you will jump out of the hole somehow because your life depends on it. So this is a time for human beings to gear themselves to be in top gear. Everybody, whatever kind of activity we are doing, it's important you're in top gear because the way you were doing things in the past may not work in six months' time. It just may not work. For a nation, for a large industry or business, small industries and businesses, individual enterprises and individual people and institutions, the way we have been functioning in the past, if the lockdown and the disruption stays for long enough, many of the things that we knew as instruments of success may be meaningless in the next six months' time, it's possible. Whether we will go that far or we will recover before that, our hope is we will recover before that. But it's very much possible, nobody is ruling out the possibility anymore because nobody is able to predict. Now the Chinese scientists who have been studying this, now they are saying the distance that the virus can travel is thirteen feet, not two meters as they said in the beginning. There's not enough space in the world for seven point six billion people with thirteen feet between them all over the place. Most homes are not enough for four to five people that are in a family to maintain thirteen feet distance. And now they're saying, on metal surfaces, it may live much longer. Earlier they said up to twelve hours they can live. Now they're saying up to seventy-two hours they may be living. Especially on the floors of the hospital, they have found where the virus-infected patients are there, the floor of the hospital is a hotbed of infection. So, uh, all the medical personnel are wearing suits, protective gears, eyeglasses, but it seems it's their shoes which is carrying maximum uh, virus infection outside in the world. But they're not changing their shoes, generally they're staying in the shoes, only a few people are changing shoes, all others are changing the suits and face masks and everything, but shoes are carrying everything. Like this, every day they're coming up new things because uh, this is a new thing. Nobody clearly knows exactly what. So as this information comes, more confusion, more fear and more panic all over the place. How long is it going to last? Is it going to completely destroy us? What's going to happen? Yes, for sure, the way we've been doing business, the way we've been conducting many things, many aspects of it may depending on how long it lasts, may come to an end. The way we've known things, what are our means of success? Those means may be irrelevant in three to six months' time, depending upon what it does, how many people it kills. Right now, as far as we know, the only sure thing we know is that, well, some tiger has got it, some dogs have got it, but they're saying they don't have enough infection to pass it on to somebody else, they have mild infections. So, largely it is only the human being who is the carrier. So one thing we know for certain is maintaining enough distance, we can come out of this as a minor aberration to our generation. 
hundred thousand people is not very minor, but considering what is the impending possibility of a calamity, hundred thousand people is considered minor in today's world, in today's situation rather. So, uh, now the snake has entered the hole, everybody needs to jump to their fullest capability, every one of you. Every one of you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing in your life, you must come to your fullest capability. This is the time. This is the time of your life where the best in you has to come. As a human being, as a working person, as whatever jobs we are doing, whatever businesses we are doing, we must come out at our best because now the snake is in the hole. If you don't jump, that's the end of you. Well, I'm not trying to draw a bleak picture. This is the reality in which we exist. Whether we will come out victorious, look back with pride how we came out of it, or we will look back with total depressed disappointment of who we are and what has happened to us, simply depends on how much distance we maintain, thirteen feet. As we were looking at this end yesterday, this… this whole thing about instilling sense of competitiveness from a kindergarten child, everywhere, I want to be number one, I want to be number one, this can be hugely damaging in a situation like this. This needs a very cohesive action, not a competitive action. A very cohesive action is needed from humanity right now. If we compete with each other, well, both of us may go. That's how it is. So, we have to unwind the silly education that's gone into your head that always you must be number one, number one, number one. Number one, you must also be the number one to go. Yes, if you always think everything is a race, life itself is a race, of course you must hit the finish line first. Virus will help you. This is very important that we unwind this tension we have created in our head. We want to be number one, if I sit here with my eyes closed for ten minutes, they all may go away, they may eat up my food. Competition all the time, this has to go down. If we have to behave sensibly in a situation like this, this has to go down. In everything, people think they have to be one up. This happened. Outside the labor ward, a few men were waiting because their wives were in labor in a major hospital. Shankaran Pillai also in the waiting, his wife also. So, the nurse came out and uh, went to a certain man and said, Sir, Mr. Thompson, you have a very healthy young boy born to you. So that man became very happy. Shankaran Pillai looked at him and said, What the hell, I came here ahead of him. <laughs> you deliver a baby boy for him, I came here ahead of him. That's not how life works. <laughs> so, this is a good time for us to correct many things that we've been doing wrong as human societies. This is definitely a great time to do that. As I said yesterday, if all of us strive on all levels, physical, mental, emotional and in terms of our work, ten percent improvement if we do in these three, four weeks that we have, then whatever the situation comes our way, we will handle it to the best of our ability. This is all we can do as human beings. Are we handling everything to the best of our possibilities? Or are we crippled by our own thought, emotion, fear? 
You may call it fear, panic, this, that, tension, it's just your own thought and emotion messing you up. When there is something important to do, will we use our hands to do that or will we slap ourselves in the face? That's all it means. That's all it means. So this is a time that everything we got must be used so that it benefits us and benefits the world in which we live. These are challenging times. Challenges make people rise. Some people will rise, some people will collapse. Unfortunately, this has been the reality. In today's world, where the communication in the world is like never before, technologies which support us to make us into not like one human being, like every human being can do hundred people's work. When that kind of capabilities are there, we must ride this challenge, not be crushed by this. If you are a good, good wave rider, your dream would be a tsunami. Tsunami would not be a disaster in your mind. You would be dreaming of a tsunami to ride. That is if you are a very good wave rider. Now, I am not so good what to do, that's not the point. Everybody must be able to do their best. There are situations outside, there are impediments, challenges, but your own mind, your own emotion, your own attitude should not become an impediment and a challenge. If you are not a challenge to yourself, rest we will handle to the best of our capabilities. This will in many ways bring humanity together, at least for the next few months, there is a certain cohesion, there is a certain level of cooperation uh, and the world is thinking more as a world than as individual nations. All these things are happening in the world. We must use that to rise above this challenge. Hmm? Questions? This question is from Damien Cassiano. Dear Sadhguru... Is he an Italian? Sounds like. <laughs> Dear Sadhguru, I find it much easier to see the wonder in the natural world than in humanity. How do I see the same wonder in human beings that I see in the peacock dancing? Well, it's a human being, right? No, no, I'm thinking if a bird is asking a question. Well, human beings don't have such a wonderful plume like the peacock, we don't have. Uh, we can put it on, you know, but it's just put on, <laughs> it's not like a peacock's plume. So uh, it's easy to see wonder in things with which you don't have to share anything. You know, there is a whole <laughs> culture growing in the world where uh, people go about saying, I, lo I love the entire humanity, but I can't stand the next human being who's sitting here. It's very easy to love God, for example, because He never comes and sits at dinner table with you. Maybe you may take his name, but if he sits at the dinner, then there'll be problem. Because he never comes, even what you offer, you are very clear, only you get to eat it. <laughs> yes, yes. If he starts eating, the offerings will poof. I must tell you, this happened. This is a interfaith beggars association. So, there are only three members, one Hindu beggar, one Christian beggar, beggar, one Islamic beggar. So, they said, uh, you know, they're very religious, but because of their economic condition, they have to be together, otherwise they would fight. So, one day they met under a tree, 
And then the Hindu beggar wanted to show that he is really a devotee. He said, see, every day whatever money and stuff, you know, generally the money the, that comes to me, which comes in the form of coins and various small denominations, I write a large om, om, and then I throw all the money up. Whatever lands on the om belongs to Shiva, rest belongs to me. I am a real devotee. Om is, you know, big tail and this one, this one, all that. The Muslim beggar said, I also do something similar, but for us, the sacredness of the moon is in the first day moon, which is a thin sliver. I draw the picture of a, a, a thin, you know, the first day moon. Then I throw the money, whatever lands on the moon belongs to Allah, rest belongs to me. <clears throat> then they asked the Christian beggar, what do you do? He said, I'll take all the money and throw it up, whatever is his he will keep it, rest. <laughs> Like this, it's easy to love a wild bird which is dancing, which is beautiful because it doesn't ask anything of you, it doesn't even like you actually. It doesn't think much of you, have you seen how a peacock looks at you? It doesn't think much of you <laughs> So there's nothing you have to offer, there's nothing you have to do, you can just enjoy things long distance. This is why, you know, people are now uh, full of love affairs going on on the Facebook, TikTok and whatever, Instagram and wherever, because you don't have to meet them, you don't have to share anything with them. You don't have to wait outside the bathroom when they're using it. You don't have to stand in a queue behind them, nothing. Instant everything, if you don't like it, you can turn it off and wipe out the account. So the peacock comes, dances, you love it, it will go away, no problem. You don't have to house it, do one thing, keep the peacock in your bedroom for three days. It will sit all over the place and in the night, it'll do <laughs> very loud sound. People may not know this, every day, they're sitting on the roof of the place where I am and pa poo pa poo they'll start in the morning, okay <laughs> So keep the peacock in your house for three days, then let's see how much you will be. So human beings are a difficult species, that includes you. So, don't make this... See, we are talking about not having distinctions of uh, race, religion, caste, creed, gender. Lot of talk is going on about this. I am telling you, don't even draw lines about the species, why? I love a monkey but I can't love a human being, this means there's an evolutionary problem within you. I love the monkeys but I can't stand the human beings. What does it mean? You don't like the evolution. So, it looks fascinating, the one monkey jumps all over from branch to branch, fascinating. Just one day keep your window open in Shivapadam. Mm. A few monkeys entered your room, you're finished. They will eat, they will tear, they will shit all over the place, they'll destroy everything that is there and they're gone. Now you come and say, ha, ah, my dear monkeys, what a job they have done. No, it won't work like that. So, it's all right, at least you're enjoying the birds, it's good. 
it's a... it's a kind of a, a lobby called ornithologist, you enjoy the birds, study the birds or enjoy the birds, bird watching. But the same birds, if they enter your room, it's different. The problem with human beings is you encounter them everywhere, they're in your house, they're in your office, they're everywhere. They're not just dancing somewhere far away. If they were just dancing far away, you would love them also. The problem is you have to work with them, you have to live with them, you have to manage them every day. That's a problem. So, I want you to understand this. Nothing wrong in you appreciating and loving a peacock dancing, perfectly fine. You must love him even when he is not dancing, that's fine. But the frog is uh, saying, where is the snake? When there are peacocks, they eat up the snakes. Every few days I'm bringing snakes and leaving them in the garden, but these peacocks eat them up in no time. You like the peacocks, I also like them, but I would like some snakes also moving around, but they all get eaten up in no time. <laughs> so, it is easy to love when there is distance. See, many people right now in this virus times, what are they complaining about? Their loved ones, they are cooped up with them in the house, big trouble. Domestic violence has increased hundred, you know, hundred percent, some people are saying, you know, some countries, all kinds of troubles, everybody's uh, asked, seeking advice, what to do, how to manage this family. These are the same people you were missing because they were going to office every day. Why are you gone for so long? But now, they are home and trouble. Distance is a wonderful thing. Death is a fantastic thing. See, dead people are always loved by everybody, have you seen this? The moment they are dead, they just wo suddenly become worship worthy. Why did you not worship them when they were alive? How come? The moment they are dead, they became worship worthy. Anywhere in the world, they'll put them up and do this, put flowers, do whatever. Just because they are dead, when you're… when they were alive, you were not willing to do it. When they're dead, you're doing it. That means what? <laughs> no, I don't want to say it, you know. When they were alive, you were struggling with them. The moment they die, you worship them and you miss them and you love them. What does this mean? You're waiting, probably. Not a good thing <laughs> at all. So. Let's look at this carefully, your problem is this, that you have a defined characteristic of your personality. You're looking for something which does not step on your persona. But human beings, you know, not every human being respects your boundaries, they step on it inevitably, some of them out of ignorance, some of them by intent like me, you know. <laughs> Always by intent. Stepping on your boundaries. So the moment somebody steps on your boundaries, you feel that person is a problem. The peacock is outside your boundaries right now, it looks very beautiful. If it steps into your boundary, you will see him also as a big nuisance. Yes, you will. Whether it's a peacock or another bird or a monkey or a donkey or whatever, from far everything is nice. So right now there is a distance between you and these creatures. So you're enjoying it, enjoy that, nothing wrong with that. But the important thing is, if you create a little distance between yourself and your own personality, you will see you will even enjoy yourself. And once you enjoy this person, you will see everybody is wonderful. Yes, <laughs> you're not getting it. 
I'm saying once you enjoy this person, everybody seems fantastic. You can enjoy everybody because uh, now you see people for who they are, not having some framework into which they must fit into, they don't fit into that. This is why in India, we created characteristics of a god in such a way, it's impossible to accept that man if he was here. You know, a Krishna, a Rama or a Shiva, you cannot accept these people. Ask the ladies, will they accept a Rama as their husband in their life? They will not. Ask, ask them, will they accept Krishna as their husband in their life? They won't, because it's too much trouble. But with six thousand years of distance, how wonderful they look, how fantastic. And Shiva, impossible man, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just anything and everything that you can think of, he is. So, this was... the character of a god was built like this so that if you can be really looking at him for all that he is and still absolutely accept him and look at him in a worshipful way, you will have... if you accept Shiva the way he is, you will have no issue with a single human being on the planet. So you must do that. Yoga Yoga Yogeshwaraya Bhuta Bhuta Bhuteshwaraya Kala Kala Kaleshwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambha Shambha Mahadev